Hello everyone, in this scenario I'm going to describe uh, one, one technique of using netting in some specific situation. Uh, I've been working on this scenario a few years ago and I still remember uh, this uh, very interesting section uh, of netting. So the first thing here we have different lens. So we have here three lens with subnet address 172.16.0.0.24 a second LAN 172.17.0.0/24 and a third LAN 172.18.0.0/24. Now, from each one of these LANs, we should be able to access the web server, which is hosted on a fourth LAN. Now, the constraint or the restriction here is that the web server is going to receive requests. All the packets of those requests will have the source IP address on the same subnet as the web server where the web server is hosted for example the web server will receive packets containing requests the source ip address inside those packets will be uh, will belong to the same subnet address which is 172.31.0.0/24 so uh, it's like the web server will be receiving requests from local host connected to the same lan where it is hooked on the second thing the web server should not be configured with a default gateway so it does not need a default gateway now how to do that very interesting let's go to pc0 in pc0 i'm going to show you the configuration i will show the configuration uh, i configure this with ip address 172.16.0.1 the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 of course I'm using subnetting and the default gateway 172.16.0.200 which is the IP address of this interface of the router the first Ethernet interface now I go to the second host in the second host I will show you on the second LAN uh, I will show you also the network parameters 172.17.0.1 subnet mask and the default gateway which is also the IP address of the interface of router the host on the third LAN same thing these are the uh, network parameters 172.18.0.1 subnet mask and default gateway so we, we have seen that each one of the hosts that belongs to each one of the three LANs is configured with the IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway, which is the IP address of this interface of router, of the interface of router, which is connected to the same network as the host itself. Now, these hosts are going to communicate with a web server, of course, which is configured and connected to a different network. So they know, they need to know the default gateway, their default gateway IP address. That's why they are all configured with it. The point is that the web server is not configured with the default gateway. So let's look at it. IP config. See, there is IP address, which is 172.31.0.100, the subnet mask 255.255.255.0, and default gateway is 0. No, there is no default gateway. Uh, also, all the packets should be configured all the packets when viewed by web server they should be considered as if they are generated or originated locally on a local LAN where the web server is configured so how to do that simple solution is to use netting so let's go to router rt1 i go to router rt1 now on this router i'm going to do the same thing the uh, just have a look at the running configuration uh, in the running configuration, let's look at the fast Ethernet 0 slash 1, the one connected to PC0 to the net to switch SW1. This interface will be connected to internal network, and this interface will be connected to the outside network. So we're going to say the following. This, all these networks will be considered as internal networks, and this network here or this LAN will be considered as an external LAN or outside network so we're going to configure the uh, router interfaces accordingly so first Ethernet 0 slash 1 IP net inside and the first Ethernet 0 slash 0 the one connected to the same LAN as the web server will be configured as being an outside interface right 
uh, I do this with RT1 I do the same thing with RT2 right so in RT2 I'm going to configure facet and 0 slash 1 to be uh, inside interface and facet and 0 slash 0 to be an outside interface right and with the third router I do the same thing I do the same thing again global the privilege mode global configuration mode interface okay facet and 0 slash 1 will be the inside interface and first interface 0 slash 0 will be the outside interface so we we are done configuring the interfaces to which um, side of the network interface are connected etc now the second step here will consist of building let's say static rules so we can use static rule here because we have just a simple single house there is no problem so how to do that <coughs> ip net inside source um, so in this case i'm going to say static now i want this 172.16.0.100 to be configured let's say to be translated into 172.31 dot zero so we have to make sure to avoid conflict because here we're using 100 let's make it 10. so first i should bring the inside local ip address which is 172.16.0.1 and it will be translated into 172.31.0.10 right okay now i go to the second router now in the second router I'm going to configure the same static NAT IP NAT IP NAT inside source static now the internal IP address will be 172.17.0.1 which is going to be translated into 172.31.0.20 right so make sure that we need to uh, avoid the uh, any overlap or conflict a conflicting IP address and for the third router also I configure NAT rule uh, inside source static so the IP address the internal IP address will be 172.18.0.1 and it will be translated into 172.31.0.30 so like this we are done now <coughs> let's let's try I go to PC0 and I need to access web server, so I put the IP address of 172.13.0.100. Does it work? Yes. All right, it is working fine, so I'm able to access the web server. And uh, I can also ping, why not? So let's try to ping using the comment prompt. I ping 172.31.0.100. This is the uh, interesting part of the experiment so everything works fine from pc0 let's go to pc1 and uh, in pc1 we can start pinging of course uh, ping the web server ip address 172.31.0.100 okay let's see if this works fine um, well it times out then there is a reply um, i launch the web browser and type the address of the web server 172.31.0.100 here again it works and the third host on the third LAN um, always ping to the web server okay so ping needs some time to function properly so it, it times out and then there is a reply uh, second same thing I will launch the, the, the browser one and I try to connect to server 172.31.0.100 and it works fine so just have a look at the web page on the web server on the web server you can view the web page http so this is the web page actually welcome to my videos about net configuration this is to show that everything works fine um, so now what is interesting is that on the web server there is no default gateway and still it can work properly Right, so again, I type IP config. There is no default gateway because here we see we have different LANs, two LANs connected to router. 
in normal situation you need to configure all the hosts on different lands with default gateway IP address to be able to communicate between among them among each other so in this situation no need to provide web server with default gateway because simply he receives requests in the IP packets and it views the source IP addresses in those requests as if being as if they are generated locally on the same subnet using the same subnet address 172.31.0.0 and this is a very interesting scenario that you might find um, in some situations why not so here is one application of NATing and as you see uh, static NAT is used uh, with a small number of uh, hosts or IP addresses Thank you for viewing this video. See you in my next presentation. Bye.